Hey y'all, I'm here today like just to encourage you. I, I know even for me it's been a journey to be encouraged and to be um, full of faith and I know faith um, and no fear but in reality sometimes you do feel fear. Um, and how I've been getting through this, because sometimes the people around you who don't have faith, they, they like to speak fear about what's going on. And um, I talked about um, being being prepared but not panicked a few weeks ago. And I, th I think that it's, well, it's, important to be informed and prepared but you can't panic like I said a few weeks ago but I'm beginning to realize that uh, that fear is hitting everybody in different ways I heard Stephen Furtick say in a sermon I heard him say we're not all in this we're not all we're all we're not all in the same boat it's the same storm, but different boats. Some of us are riding in luxury boats, like taking it easy, we're not too worried about it or whatever. And some of us are really worried about it. Some of us are really scared. And what I've, what I've come to now is that either God is God or he's not. So if he's God, he said to me over and over again, do not fear. He said, I've got you. He's like, I'm not going to let you go. He said, he said, um, he said, even if, if something does go wrong, know that I've got you and I'll never let you go. Even if something goes wrong in your your health or your finances or even if you do get the COVID virus and even if you do um, lose your job because of it or whatever, he still got you and he knows what we are going through as a society. So if if we walk in the fact that God knows what he's doing. God knows how this is affecting us all. Um, if we walk in that fact and know that he knows that we're human and that we're struggling, it, it's okay to be human and it's okay to struggle. A lot of preachers say have faith and yes, but at the same time, if you have fear, don't don't be like a super Christian and say, I'm believing, I'm believing when you're still fearful. Just say, God, I'm fearful. I know your word says this, but I'm having a hard time getting there. And he'll help you get there. And bring your concerns to the Lord. He's so desperately wanting to hear from his children right now. He's so desperately wanting to hear how we're coping, how we're dealing with this. And he's so wanting us to just pour our hearts out before him and not be afraid to. Some of us feel like we need to be super Christians all the time. We need to be full of faith all the time. No fear, no doubt, no anything. But he knows that that's not who we are. We're human. And we doubt and we have fear sometimes. But the key I found is you can have it, but don't let it control you. Like, you can have fear, you can feel fear, but don't let it control who you are or whose you are. And always remember that God loves you. And he will never see you forsaken. He will never see you without food. He will never see you without ways to make for you. He said, 
He ma- he makes a way in the wilderness for you, and. And this is our wilderness, and he's making a way for us in this wilderness. And we've got to understand that he knows what he's doing. He knows how he's going to use this virus for his glory. I, I, and he also says, look for the little miracles. Look for the ordinary miracles around you. Look for the look for the way that this disease is bringing people together. I I'm in the midst of such awful circumstances. I've never seen churches uh, step up so much. I've never seen like different churches step up so much to try and help their members. I know different churches are doing different things online to try and help their members. A lot of a lot of churches are doing different outreaches to people's um, homes and stuff. They're doing some wonderful things. And if, if what you look at will be magnified. So if you're constantly turning it on the news and driving yourself crazy. Oh, there's a amount, there's this amount of COVID cases here. There's this amount of COVID cases here. There's this amount of COVID cases here. You'll drive yourself crazy because it's what you're looking at. And what you're looking at, what you focus on will be magnified. And what you what you give less attention to will shrink. Now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't be informed, that we shouldn't be concerned, that we shouldn't be praying for this. We should be doing all that. We should be praying for um, the healthcare workers that are on the front lines of this, for the nurses and the doctors and the um, healthcare workers that have to go into the hospitals. But we should also be praying for the medical uh, researchers that are researching this virus and trying to find a cure. They say it's going to be at least 18 months out. I'm praying that God bring that down to six or even three months. I'm just praying, Lord, that you give those workers wisdom, that you give those researchers wisdom about how to um, make a vaccine to get uh, combat this devil. And in the meantime, um, there are lessons that you want us to learn through this. So teach us the lessons that you want us to learn through this. I don't want to just go through things. I want to pick up the lessons that you would have me learn through this. Um, I think that people are so afraid because we don't know what's going to happen. But as Christians, we know that we don't know what's going to happen. But we love and know someone who does. And his name is Jesus Christ. And he's wanting to put his arms around you today. He's wanting to comfort you today. He's wanting to let you know. He sent me to tell you, Facebook, that you are not alone. That you are not alone. That he's with you. That he loves you. And there is nothing that he's not going to do for you. And... And everything right now is set to bring him a new wave of glory. I was saying to God this morning, I'm like, oh my gosh, with all this trouble, there must be one heck of a blessing coming forth to the world. Like, because um, I've heard people always say, um, new level, new devil. And the hotter the fire gets, the greater the blessing. 
Wow, this fire is so hot. So I can't wait to see what God is going to do through this. What the Lord is already doing. I've seen, I've seen pastors um, that never go online. Online every day. I've seen um, members, congregation members, just get together. Look for the little miracles. And you'll see how fast those are magnified and how fast the bad news decreases. And he wants me to tell you today that he's close to you. That there may be social distancing, but there's no distancing in him. And he just wants you to cast you cares on him because he cares for you. And there was this little uh, song uh, from Salty Songbook, and it said, "Salty was a uh, was a singing songbook in the '90s that would uh, he had a couple of praise tapes for children, and it was awesome. So I remember one praise tape." He, a little boy sang, I will cast all my cares upon you. I will lay all of my burdens down at your feet. And any time I don't know what to do I will cast all my cares upon you Dear heart cast all your cares upon me you can lay all of your burdens down at my feet. And any time you don't know what to do, dear heart cast all your cares upon me he would say that to you today he doesn't want you to carry this alone he doesn't want you to sh share the burden for these he doesn't want you to have the burden for those kids alone you are not alone there are online communities just waiting to embrace you um I know for one instance, uh, um, there is Elevation has a thriving online community which has e-groups and now any anybody can join. Um, you just have to go to the Elevation Church page and you can join an e-group there. I did and we're having our first meeting on Tuesday because we need community. We need community in a time like this. In a time that we're told to be socially distanced, we need an online community. We need to uh, talk to people that will speak life to us that will say the storm will be over. And I'm going to tell you, there's one, there'll be one day where that storm will be over. There'll be one day where that storm, where this storm of uh, COVID-19 or coronavirus, whatever you want to call it, will be over. And we will be all right. Till then, look to Jesus because he is the author and the finisher of our faith. He, he, he made our faith and he will end our faith. He, 
he created our faith and he will end our faith. He's the author, author and the finisher of our faith. So he knows when you're faithless and he doesn't blame you for it. And he doesn't want to keep you, um, he doesn't want to yell at you for it. He wants you to bring it to him. He says, daughter, son, bring your faithlessness to me. Let me help you carry that load. Let me help you raise those children and find activities for them to do inside. Let me help you figure out how you're going to get groceries. Let me figure out, let me help you figure out how you're going to pay bills. And I, and I declare that in this time of isolation, God will make himself real and known to you like never before. I declare that God will work miracles in your life like never before. I declare that he will provide for you like never before. Lord Jesus, um... There's a breaking in my favor. There's a shifting in my direction. There's a breaking in my favor as I there's a breaking in my favor there's a shifting in my direction there's a breaking in my favor I vow to praise you through the good and the bad. I'll praise you whether happy or sad. I'll praise you in all I go through because praise is what I do because I owe it all to you praise is what I do close to you. I lift my hands in praise. Praise is who I am. I will praise you while I can. I'll bless you at all times. Because I vow to praise you through coronavirus. I'll praise you whether happy or sad. I'll praise you in all that I go through. Because praise is what I do. Because I owe it all to you. Praise is what I do. Even when I'm going through, I've learned 
to worship you. I love this part. No, my circumstance doesn't even stand the chance. My praise outweighs the bounds. I vow to praise you through the good and the bad. I'll praise you whether happy or sad. I'll praise you in all I go through because praise is what I do. That's what I do. Praise is what I do. That's what I do. He will bring us out. He'll bring us out without a doubt. He'll bring us out. Bring us out, he will bring us out. He'll bring us out without a doubt. He'll bring us out, bring us out. Praise is what I do. That's what I do. We praise you, Lord, in spite of this. So, guys, I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Take care. Be blessed until then. We bring a sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. Anybody old school like me? And we offer up to you a sac our sacrifices of thanksgiving and we offer up to you our sacrifices of praise. Oh, we bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord and we offer up to you our sacrifices of thanksgiving and we offer up to you our sacrifices of praise we bring a sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring a sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We offer you now the sacrifice the praise which is the fruit of our lives. 
We magnify your name. You are holy and most worthy. Deserving all the glory from the field of our lips. The sacrifice of praise evermore, evermore. With our lives, Lord, be praised evermore, evermore. With our From the fruit of our lips, the sacrifice of praise. From the fruit of our lips, the sacrifice of praise. Make worship a lifestyle. A lifestyle of worship means a habitual practice of worship. It doesn't matter if you can sing or not. Singing is not worship. Singing is just uh, a group of notes coming on your mouth. mouth. Worship is a lifestyle. And he's saying, make worship a priority. Make it a lifestyle. Make it every day. Just even if you can put on some praise music and lift your hands. Or not even just music. Just lift your hands and say, Lord, I praise you. I know you are providing for me. And I know I said I'd be off minutes ago, but the Spirit of the Lord takes over. And when he takes over, it just takes over. So guys, for real this time, thank you so much and I will see you either tomorrow or I think I'm going to take Saturday off, but that's up in the air, uh, or Sunday, either tomorrow or Sunday. So take care. Bye. Hopefully this encourages you. I'm praying for you. I love you so much and I thank you for watching my videos every day and I hope that I'm an encouragement to you. Bye. Be blessed. Receive the fact that you are blessed. And there's nothing that can otherwise harm, harm you that God hasn't allowed it's like uh when he when he said to job he's he, no when the devil when he was talking to the devil in heaven and the devil said who could i who can i um who can i um bother he said he said try job um he said you can you can start messing with Job because so, so, sometimes God has to give permission for Satan to be messing with you to show you who you really are and who he really is. So take strength today that he is with you and he loves you and he will never ever leave you and I'm praying for you. Amen. And I'm really signing off this time. Bye.